Hi guys and welcome back to Simply Forex, the channel dedicated to you, the trader. We want you to be successful in the markets. So guys, I'm going to give you some gold every day. I'm going to let you know which currency pairs I'm looking to trade and which direction. And I'm also going to let you know which news that you must be aware of. So let's take a look at the chart and what I'm potentially going to trade today. Traders, it's Friday. We've made it to the end of the week. Woohoo! Um, it's Friday, the 22nd of July, guys. Um, and as always, we're going to look back at yesterday's trades, we're going to look at today's potential trades, and we're going to look at uh, the potential news for today as well. Yesterday was a bit tricky, guys, because we had a lot of euro news, and the trades we were looking at were euro pairs. Okay, but let's have a look and see what happened. So there were two potential trades that I was willing to trade yesterday. The first one is this. This is the euro against the Swiss franc. Okay, so we were looking to short this pair. So this is the day chart. And as you can see, it's clearly in a downtrend. Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Okay. And then price comes back up and tests these last highs here. Okay. And then as you can see, price bounced off with this uh, bearish candle here. Okay. So let me zoom in so you can see that a bit clearer. So yeah, these were the last highs. On the day chart, we had this bearish candle bounce off of the... Um, this area of resistance totally dwarfs the candle before it. We like this. We like to see this. And then the idea was just to take price back down to this blue line. Okay. Um, obviously, yesterday was the big interest rate decision on the euro. And as we can see, we had a massive whipsaw. Yeah, with this candle here. Um, but the direction's good, guys. Yeah, it come up to our second grey zone and then came flying down. Okay. So that was the reason why we were shorting this pair, guys. Let's see. Uh, let's have a closer look on the H1 to see what the hell happened. Um, so I had one bite of this cherry and was tempted to have two. Okay, so let me explain, guys. All right. So uh, we had our two grey zones. And as you can see, price came up to our grey zone here. Yeah, this was before all the news and the chaos happened okay so i actually got in on this candle here you're like tom it's a green candle i'm like i know it's a green candle but the wick look at the wick on this the size of this wick yeah from here to here compared with the body okay it's probably about four times the size of the body okay so because of this huge rejection wick, yeah, I am happy to take this lower. Okay, so I actually entered on the close of this candle here, put my stop above here, and then I took 100% of the trade down to this psychological level here, this 9,900. Okay, and because there was news coming out later, guys, I closed 100% of my trade at this level, okay? Because even before when news comes out, the price doesn't know what to do with itself. It can become volatile. And then when the news comes out, obviously, all hell breaks loose. So for those reasons, guys, I was happy just to close 100% of my trade at this 9900 level. I got a risk to reward of a little bit more than one is to one, okay? So happy. Yeah, got some profit before the news come out. Yeah, happy trader. Okay, um, how did you trade this pair, guys? Maybe you got in on this pair. Okay, so yeah, for me, first trade of the day was a good one. Okay, then obviously the news came out, guys. So this candle here was the hour of the news. Yeah, try and trade that if you can. All right, so obviously we had this large rejection wick here, yeah, which may have tempted me to enter the trade, 
But no, because obviously we have news coming out and just trading on the news, hoping it will come down or hoping it will come up is just gambling. Yeah. Yeah. So do not do that. So this was the news candle. And then after this candle, I didn't really know what to do with this market. If it was, you know, uh, if, if the candle closed here and it was a very bullish, uh, sorry, a very bearish candlestick, I would have entered this pair. But you have this wick. Look at the size of this wick at the bottom. So as soon as that happened, guys, for me, this pair become untradeable. Okay. But I'd already made some nice profit. But as you can see from this candle, we continued down for the rest of the day. Okay, so it went with our, so our trade idea was good, our direction was good, and we had a nice trade. Okay, let me know how you traded this pair. Second trade was this, this was the Euro against the Japanese Yen. And we were looking to short this pair. Okay, so um, price was clearly in a downtrend. Okay, so if we start here, this was the last uh, higher low that bounced up. It didn't create a higher high. And instead, price came down. As soon as it broke this low, for me, it was in a downtrend. Okay. Then price has come back down, come all the way back up. And this is no coincidence, guys. If I scroll these lows across, yeah, so these last higher lows here have now acted as which was once support is now resistance remember i show you this time and time again okay and then we had this bearish engulfing candlestick pattern form so the idea was just to take price down to one of these blue lines okay one of our higher time frame targets okay guys so we were looking to short this pair for those reasons um, and as you can see look at the daily candle yesterday this will this will probably be a trade today, guys, as well. Um, so, yeah, again, it did come past our grey zone, but closed back in and whipped back down. OK, but let's look at H1 because this gives us a more clear, detailed picture of what happened. So. On this trade, guys, let me tell you what I did. And again, guys, I'll be very transparent. I'll tell you if I have losers. There's a lot of, um, you know, trader gurus out there who will just show you their winning trades. But I will show you my losing trades as well, guys, because you learn more when you have a losing trade. Trust me. OK, so uh, I actually got in yeah, on this candle here, guys. So when price come back up to this grey zone. Yeah, this was a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern. I entered here, I put my stop above here, and the idea was just to take price back down to this last low, where I would have closed 100% as well because of the moves coming out. But as you can see, guys, price had other ideas. It came up and it took just took my stop out here. Yeah, as you can see with this green wick here. So, yeah, that was a losing trade, guys. Again, we'll have losing trades. Um, yeah, just follow your money management. Okay, so yeah, that was a losing trade. Then, and then after that, guys, nothing was really uh, telling me that sellers were in control. Okay, but then obviously we had the news candle. Okay, so this was the news candle. Yeah, similar to the Euro Swiss franc, but not as much wick at the bottom here. Okay, so. Um, this is a little unlikely, guys, but it's probably because I had a losing trade and it's all part of your psychology, yeah? But I took this trade as well, okay? So after once that, that this is the hour of the news. You had the interest rate decision release and you had the press conference all within this one hour. So what I did, guys, I actually entered on the close of this candle. I had to put my stop above here. Okay, this was around 80, 90 pips. Okay, and then all I was looking to do, guys, was take price back down until I get a risk to reward of one is to one, which was roughly about here. Okay, so I would argue a little bit risky, perhaps something I wouldn't normally do. 
probably because I had a losing trade with this candle. Yeah, psychology was playing with me. You know, we try and blank out and keep homeostasis, but sometimes it will creep in. All right, so I actually ended this trade and got a risk to reward of one is to one and closed 100% of my trade. Okay, so I had one losing trade and one good trade on this pair. Um, also, guys, bearing in mind, if I enter here, and this is 90 pips, okay? So you have to bear in mind, you really have to reduce your trade size so that it coincides with your money management, okay? But again, once it hits one is to one, you're still making the same amount of money. You just have to reduce your trade size. Okay, guys, that was the Euro Yen. We had one losing trade, one good trade, and on the Euro Swiss franc, we had one good trade. So we had a profitable day yesterday, guys. I hope you did too. Um, let's take a look at today's trades now. So it was a tricky day yesterday, guys, what with all the euro interest rate decision news. Um, but we still managed to make a nice profit yesterday, guys. So I hope you did too. And I hope you enjoyed the recap, guys. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Come join us. Yeah, smash that notification button. Uh, and also smash the like button. Help support the channel. Thank you. Um, right, so for today, for Friday the 22nd of July, we have Trez. We have three potential trades. Okay, the first one is this is the Euro against the Japanese Yen. And we've been shorting this since yesterday, guys. Okay, so for me, let me explain why. Remember the day chart is your why am I going long or why am I going short? And I will tell you why we are going long. Uh, sorry, why we are going short on this pair. So, price was in an uptrend. Okay, we had higher highs, higher lows. Didn't create a higher high, higher lows. Didn't create a higher high. Remember, guys, if it, if it keeps not making a higher high, then we know price could be breaking down. And then, sure enough, price breaks down and breaks these lows here. I'm going to drag this across the screen because it comes into effect later as well. Okay, and it breaks this um, low, comes back up, and then it's in a downtrend, guys. Okay, and then it's come all the way back up and tested this zone again. Okay, so we've had both of these candles bouncing off of this zone. So it was once support over here. And then once it retests it, it's now become an area of resistance here. Okay. And yeah, like I say, guys, let's zoom in a little bit. We've had these two bearish um, candlesticks yeah, form at this zone here. All right. So the idea, because of these candles, is just to take price from one of our grey zones down to this blue line, this 13950, or even this blue line here okay all right guys we're looking to short this pair and that is the reason why let's look at h1 now for our, our criteria so we have our direction our h1 is now we need certain criteria to be met if it is we can enter simple as that okay so we've got two gray zones here guys we can enter on so the first one is this so price could just retrace into this grey zone, which corresponds with this last H1 high here and these H1 lows here. Okay, so price could retrace into here. We want to see a bearish candlestick pattern form. That's our cue to enter. We enter the trade. We close the trade at the last H1 low. This is always our first target, but we need to have a risk to reward of at least one is to one. Okay, if we don't, then we can let the trade run a little bit until we get one is to one, for example. Okay, we close 80% and then we leave 20% to run down to our, one of our higher time frame targets. Okay, if that doesn't happen, guys, price could retrace all the way back up to here, okay, which corresponds with these highs here. Okay, and then again, we want to see the same. We want to see a bearish candlestick pattern form. We enter the trade, 
Um, I would get back out at this grey zone, close 80% and then leave 20% to run. Okay, guys, so Euro against the Japanese Yen. We're looking to short that pair and that is the criteria. Okay, next trade is this. This is the US dollar against the Swiss franc. And a, a couple of the US dollar pairs are telling me that we have potential for some profit, okay, in the, in the short term. All right, so this is one of them. This is the US dollar against the Swiss franc, and we are looking to short this pair. So the two key zones for this pair have been this and this. Very crudely drawn, but you get the idea. And price has just been in a side, sideways market. Yeah, just ranging. Okay, but now it's only come up to this level here, and I'm willing to take shorts. Why, you ask? Well, let me take a look at the weekly chart. So if we look on here, guys, yeah, this whole hair area here is an area of resistance. Okay, because of this large wick formed a few weeks ago, yeah, this is an area of resistance. And we had this weekly candle react at that level. Okay, so that is why I'm happy to take a trade halfway up a ranging market okay and we also had a couple of bearish candles but then yesterday we had this bearish candle okay we've also had this one yeah this one okay so these are all telling me that price wants to go lower but the one from yesterday tells me that we still have some room to the downside and from our gray zone we just want to take price down to this nine six hundred level Okay, guys, so we're looking to short this, and this is the why. Now, let's look at the H1 for our criteria. Okay, our criteria must be met for us to enter the trade. Um, right, guys, so as you can see, we've got just the one grey zone. It's quite a big grey zone. It's about 40, 50 pips, okay, because there's a lot of price action, and it's not that tidy, yeah? So you've got this last h1 low you've got these like h1 highs here you've got this potential area okay so there's a lot of uh, potential points that i needed to take into account hence the large gray zone okay but what we want to see guys is price retrace up into here somewhere we want to see a bearish candlestick pattern that's always our trigger to enter the trade if you don't know what bearish or bullish candlestick patterns are, there's a tutorial, guys, that you can check out on the channel. Okay, and then we enter the trade. We take price back down to our last H1 lows, which is here. We close 80%, and then we leave 20% to run down to our higher time frame target. Okay, guys, so US dollar, Swiss franc, short. The third and final trade today is this. This is the Aussie dollar against the US dollar. Okay, guys. Um, and what we're looking to do is buy this pair. Let me explain why. So as you can see, guys, price has been in a downtrend. Okay. And it's been using this gray diagonal line as an area of resistance. Okay. All right. And then eventually this diagonal channel breaks. Okay but also it breaks these last highs here, okay? So as soon as this handle formed, for me, there was a change in price structure, okay? And then yesterday, we also had this bullish candle form, which broke this last high. This is very encouraging to me, okay? So all we wanna do is from one of our gray zones is take price back up to this psychological level of uh, 6,950. Okay, or this grey level. Okay, guys, we're looking to buy this pair. All right, now let's look at H1 for our criteria, our entries. So, guys, what we want to see is price retrace into one of these grey zones, which currently it already has. Then we want to see a bullish candlestick pattern for, yeah? We can get into the trade, we can close 80% of these last highs, and then leave 20% to run. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see what this H1 can does. Okay, it's currently forming. Okay, okay, and then if that doesn't happen, guys, price could retrace all the way back down to these last lows here. Yeah, 
And then again, we're still looking for the same. We're looking for a bullish candlestick pattern. We can enter the trade, take price back up to this gray zone, to be honest, is what I would do. Close 80% and then leave 20% to run. All right, guys. So yeah, Aussie dollar, US dollar. We're looking to long. We're looking to buy this market as well. Okay, guys. So they're the three trade ideas for today. Let's take a look at the crazy world of news. Guys, if you've been enjoying this daily morning analysis, I hope you have and would like to receive it every single day, Monday to Friday, then please subscribe to the channel. Come join us and smash that notification button. All right, guys. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Right, news for Friday the 22nd of July. So no real news overnight, guys, as you can see. The first piece of news that we're interested in today is this at 7 o'clock, London GMT. We've got retail sales coming out of the UK. So this could potentially move any pound pair, guys. All right. We carry on down at 8.30 um, London GMT. We've got German manufacturing PMI. Okay, so another three-star rating. This could move any euro pairs. We carry on down. There's more. There's more. Um, at 9.30, we've got a slew of PMI data. We've got composite, manufacturing, and services here. So, yeah, these three figures combined, guys, yeah, could really move the pound, yeah? Three three-star three ratings, okay? So, must be aware of this coming out. And then the last piece of news for today is this. At 1.30, coming out of Canada, we've got core retail sales, okay? So, this could potentially move any Canadian pair. And as you can see, guys, for the rest of the day, there's no other important move that we're interested in. All right, guys. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the vid. If you have, please subscribe, like, and share. Um, I hope you've had a great week and have a great trading day. And have a wonderful weekend. See you on Monday, guys.